Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, July 14th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, it's Microsoft Patch Tuesday, and it was, well, probably a little bit more than average sort of a patch Tuesday with 117 vulnerabilities. Nine vulnerabilities were either already exploited or at least publicly disclosed. And of course, one of these nine is the famous uh, print nightmare print spooler vulnerability that was patched late last week. Now, for everybody who expected maybe another iteration of the print spooler patch, there was no such thing and there is not likely going to be another patch. Microsoft has explained that the patch that they released is complete. And of course, you also need to heed Microsoft's uh, configuration advice in order to completely mitigate the vulnerability, the remote code execution, as well as the privilege escalation part of the vulnerability. There was also an interesting vulnerability that was patched in Windows Hello. Windows Hello is Microsoft's uh, biometrics way to log into Windows uh, workstations. And uh, apparently it was possible to essentially capture an infrared image of an individual, then create a USB device that would emulate a camera and just deliver this one individual frame. Of course, part of the problem here with Windows Hello is that it has to work with a wide range of different hardware devices, unlike, uh, for example, Apple's Face ID, which will only work with very specific cameras that are integrated into Apple devices. You also got critical patches for Exchange Server again. So that's always, of course, something to pay attention to. A remote code execution vulnerability with a CVSS value of 9.1. That was the highest one that we had this month. And also an elevation of privilege vulnerability with a CVSS score of 9.0. And to make things more interesting, the remote code execution vulnerability had been disclosed prior to the patch being released. No exploit yet, but Microsoft does consider exploitation for this vulnerability more likely. So definitely get patching on this Microsoft Exchange vulnerability and that CVE 2021-3447. So aside of a brain spooler, Microsoft Exchange should be at the top of your patch list for this week. And then, of course, we also got patches from Adobe. Again, 28 vulnerabilities affecting Adobe Dimension, Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Frameburger, Adobe Bridge, and, of course, Adobe Acrobat and Reader, which is probably the wide, most widely used program among those five, with 14 critical and five important vulnerabilities. Windows and Mac OS are affected by these Acrobat vulnerabilities. And uh, actually, particular for Mac OS, you should review if you actually need Acrobat and Acrobat Reader on Mac OS systems. Uh, Mac OS has uh, pretty decent uh, PDF processing capabilities built in. So uh, maybe there are some special uses where you do need it. But for the most part, uh, you can probably get away without using Acrobat and reducing your attack surface a little bit as a result. And a number of government organizations have uh, been uh, putting out bulletins regarding Forge Rock Open AM. Forge Rock Open AM is an access management solution. So one of those pieces of software that if compromised could give an attacker access uh, to your entire network. And exactly this is happening. There is a remote code execution vulnerability that is present in this product. And apparently it's already actively being exploited and government organizations in the US and Australia have reported breaches as a result. A uh, patch has been released now, but apparently uh, the attacks have been going on for a while before the patch was released. So if you're using this product, then yet again, make sure that you are verifying the integrity of the product uh, as you're applying the patch. 
And regardless of all these technical vulnerabilities that we're talking about, one of the favorite delivery mechanisms is still an email with a forged uh, from address or a lookalike domain name. Now, we do have a number of technical means and you know, we've already talked about them often in the past, like DKIM, SPF, DMARC and the like uh, to detect a forged emails. But what has been missing so far a little bit is the user component of this. And there's a standard that's sort of up and coming called BIMI or BIMI, not sure how it really to pronounce it. And it looks like Gmail is now supporting the standard, which really sort of gives it uh, some uh, life and purpose. And the idea behind this standard is that you have a specific DNS record that contains a logo for your organization. And if an email passes all the uh, DKIM checks and the like, then this logo will now display be displayed in Gmail next to the from address, giving the user a little bit more visual assertion that the email is authentic. Interesting concept. I think we really have to see how it works out and uh, Gmail kind of putting uh, this effort behind it may actually make this work and uh, achieve some critical mass. Well, uh, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.